and welcome to part 96 of my report on the McCarrick Report by Patrick Parson. We continue chapter 25, Knowledge of Prior Allegations and McCarrick's Activity During the Papacy of Francis, Spring 2013 to Spring 2017. Part A, Knowledge of Prior Allegations and Indications during the early papacy of Francis, spring to fall, 2013. We left our last segment with the report offering very critical views of Nuzio Vigano, clearly suggesting he lied about telling Pope Francis about McCarrick's activities, and conversely, indicating that Pope Francis had never been made aware of McCarrick's depredations. The report tells us that Vigano seemed to be expecting to lead anti-corruption efforts in Vatican City. The report also states that although Vigano had a copy of the June 14, 2008 indications, which Cardinal Ray had developed for McCarrick to follow, Vigano did not provide a copy to the Pope during their meeting. And a footnote on page 407 tells us, quote, In his August 22, 2018 statement, Vigano wrote that he told Pope Francis that Pope, Fra Pope Benedict ordered McCarrick to withdraw to a life of prayer and penance. In an interview, Pope Francis stated that he did not recollect Vigano having mentioned anything about sanctions or restrictions on McCarrick or any mandate that he retire to a life of prayer and penance. In addition, as discussed above in section 22, Pope Benedict XVI had never ordered McCarrick to withdraw to a life of prayer and penance, something that would have been in stark contrast to Cardinal McCarrick's active ministry and international work during the period prior to 2013. And Vigano himself had forwarded a petition requesting that Pope Francis remove any unrelated temporary restriction on McCarrick's capacity to ordain priests and deacons in May 2013, only one month before the June 2013 meeting at Santa Marta. At the time that Vigano facilitated McCarrick's upcoming ordination of numerous members of the IVE religious order in the Archdiocese of Washington, there is no record that Vigano voiced concerns or objections of any kind. Unquote. So what are we to conclude from all of this? If we let ourselves be guided by what appears to be the intent of the report, we label Vigano as a hypocritical, vindictive liar, while breathing a sigh of relief that Pope Francis knew absolutely nothing about McCarrick's predations until they were revealed to him in 2018. On the other hand, if we read between the lines, a number of questions might be raised as to why different witnesses are treated differently by the report. And again, if the report is supposedly conducting a thorough investigation by questioning everyone involved in the McCarrick case, why isn't one of the loudest voices interviewed? A suspicious mind might get the notion that the intention of the report is to avoid answers rather than to find them. 
Part A of Chapter 25 ends with a report telling us that there is no evidence Vigano requested a meeting with Congregation for Bishops Prefect Ulet to discuss McCarrick in either 2012 or 2013. The report f seems to feel this is hammering the final nail into the coffin of Vigano's trustworthiness. Although one might ask why meeting with Ouellette would be necessary, when Figano says he informed the Pope about McCarrick on at least two different occasions. Speaking of coffins, how certain are we of our own outcomes after we are laid to our own final rest? Are we assured of a loving welcome from God and eternal life with them in heaven? Or might there be an opposite and terrifying result instead, because we have not lived our lives fully in accord with God? Let us redirect our lives now by praying the Fatima prayer. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven especially those in most need of thy mercy.